We're ready to go under the Friday night lights of London. Men start this scratch. Well, a good night here puts most of the riders in their respective fields in with a shot at overall glory tomorrow. This is the lineup for the men's scratch list, minus Matthias Buchli, who we must congratulate, who has become a father. Congratulations, Matthias, understandably, away and at home. 17 riders on the track. It's the Friday night lights of London in the Lee Valley Velo Park. The leader is Dylan Bibic, Joe Rouser with me, Rob Hatch, and we are all ready to go. And a welcome back to the main man who was missing last week, of course, suffering condition. He had a concussion protocol that was enforced after an afternoon race, but the defending champion returns to the boards. It's going to be a big night tonight, Joe. Here's so Claudia Emhoff won the overall series here in London last year, having been tied on points. It was such a tight race for him. He's, he's a real favourite among riders, so we're very happy to see him back racing here uh, for the grand finale in London today and tomorrow evening. So, yeah, wishing him well after his crash last weekend that he's back, so we'd love to see that. We've got a neutral lap now, then the race will get underway next time around. We just need everybody together for the commissaires to fire the gun to signify the start of the race. And then we have 20 laps of scratch racing. 20 laps, it is short in a scratch race. The rare, rare occasion there where the gun was fired with a, a gap in the peloton, but we've got to stick to time tonight. It's fast, it's furious. It's the UCI Track Champions League, round four of five, and all ready to go. They're funny things, these short scratch races, aren't they? Sometimes you get full gas races from the start. Other times they're cagey affairs. Again, it's a strange look, isn't it? Little gaps everywhere, lots of looking around already. Yeah, so just five kilometers of racing. But, but, you know, it is an endurance race. These are endurance riders, but it is a very short event. But it won, it's one that people seem to enjoy because it's always raced really aggressively. You can see already the pace is on. It's Will Tipple, the world champion for Great Britain, on the front of the moment, just swinging up the track there. And you can see he's a very popular wheel to follow. The world champion, the rainbow bands on his back. And those watching on, making sure they have the memories to take home. Such a fast-moving race, this, that while we've just been introducing things, setting up things, you've given your vision of what might happen, they're about to come across the line again, and one of the five kilometres has already been raced. Certainly has, so just 16 laps to go now. And it's a tricky one, because normally in a scratch race, you, you, know, you take a few laps to get into it, you wait for somebody else to attack, you have the tactic of trying to counter somebody else's attack, but there's not really time for that. But occasionally you see these sort of lulls in pace, and those are the chances to try and make a move. And you can just see now it's a big move from the British rider, Will Perrett. Will Perrett then in the white, blue and red is away. He's going to be chased straight away as well. So Astian Mora thinks about trying to get across in third wheel. And listen to this. This is what it does to London. It gets the crowd on side, gets them chasing. And Claudio Imhoff also enjoyed this particular track last year. This is where he shocked all of his rivals and Mr. Consistency was crowned the Champions League winner. And he's right on the wheel of Perrin. Yeah, very smart wheel to follow. Claudio Imhoff knows that the British riders are going to want to win in front of the home crowd this evening. Some of them aren't quite so high up in the overall, but this is a big chance to get a win in front of a home crowd. And Perrett is pushing on. It's 12 laps to go, but he's got he's got a company not far behind, but he's pushing on for now. This is Mora in the chase, the man who's twice been second. Of course, missed out with injury, didn't he, in round two. Not quite been himself in terms of his form. He had a break before the Champions League this year. He's building up to the Euros in January. Told me he's off to altitude on Monday. He's about to get very serious indeed as he builds the Olympic Games. Part of his prep is going to be trying to win here. And just as that move dies down, we get our hesitation halfway through the race. Yeah, so it's these moments of hesitation where you can perhaps try and sneak away. And I think we've got another attack at the bottom at the moment. We're just pushing on, but everybody is wise to it. And wheels are being held very tightly there. And now everybody swings up once again. Dylan Bimmitz, the man in the light blue leader's jersey, has to contend with things, has to watch. This is tight league, the men's endurance league. Mora again at the front.
Gavin Hoover from the United States just sneaking away. And that he's taken with him is Will Pirrett, Pirrett again. And if you think back almost 12 months ago, Joe, it was the scratch on the first of the two London nights that Will Pirrett took. He likes, there's something about the scratch on night one in London for him. There certainly is, and I think, you know, it's the home crowd it's making the most of that. He knows that he will get all that support, and also you know that as a British rider here, you, you lose the element of surprise. You know, you get out of the saddle, everybody goes wild, and he's just thought, you know what, I'm going to just take it on from the front and keep pushing on. This is interesting because there's a group of two, a group of four chasing, and the series leader yeah. is not there anywhere to be seen. He's following, I guess he's just following the wheels of those closest to him, if he can. Yeah, there's a huge opportunity for everybody to gain some points. As you were saying, we, we still have 40% of the racing to go at this year's Track Champions League, so a lot can change tonight and tomorrow night here in London. So, you know, all, all the points are to play for. It could be all changed, and we're pushing on. We're inside the final five laps now. Last quarter of the race as there's an opportunity to try and dart across, and it's Jules Hesters who's trying to take that opportunity and try to get there. It's six riders here, led by Perrett. Hoover's there as well. You see Guillemette, the other Canadian riders involved too. Opportunity too for Reinhardt, who's had a quiet year, hasn't he, the German? But there's not quite enough firepower. And with 750 metres to go, three laps, things are going to come together again. And this is going to be an interesting one to watch. Keep around the world champion, Tim Ball, who's starting to make it to the front of the pack now. Just on his wheel, picking his wheels, the series leader, Dylan Bibic. He likes winning this event. He's done it with regularity in the last few weeks. Can he do it again? 500 metres to go now as you get the move from the outside. And this time it's come from Roy Hifting of the Netherlands. He darts away like a bullet. One and a half laps to go now as they try and come around and join him. He'll take the bell, though. Is this going to be a Dutch win? It's been a poor season for them. And their endurance athletes in the Champions League so far. But the chase is on and it's him Hoff trying to do that and trying to get involved. Ifting, though, will do it. Ifting can celebrate. And it is the flying Dutchman who finally wins in London. Roy Ifting with victory. A chance to get the arms in the air. And that is a very big one for a man who this season, by his own admission, hasn't quite been up there yet. Yeah, that is a huge result for Roy Efting. The man is 15th overall in the series so far, so he needed to really turn things around this weekend. And I love that aggressive racing, but also the patience of that took. You know, we saw a big move from Will Perrick twice. We saw him followed twice by other big-name riders. But Roy Efting waited and waited, just seeing Harry Lefrayson there. Of course, teammate from the Netherlands, really supportive of his teammates up on the track there. But, you know, brilliant aggressive racing there by Roy Efting. Timing that move to perfection. And it's very short scratch race, but absolutely nailed it.